Over the past nine days, the internet community has celebrated the .orgs that have helped, healed, elevated, enlightened, protected, and preserved us in 2020. I'm Sarah Simmons, the host of this year's .org Impact Awards program, and I've had the pleasure of getting to know more about each of this year's honorees and the incredible work that they do to improve the world. What an inspiring collection of organizations and individuals. Each of these organizations and individuals has a story to tell. Throughout this 10 days of .org, we have recognized the people and organizations making a difference in combating the coronavirus, promoting education, championing equality, equity, and inclusion, advancing environmental sustainability, fighting hunger and poverty, promoting a safer internet. And we've also recognized those driving innovation, going above and beyond as volunteers and creating new organizations to serve our communities. PIR is making $85,000 in donations to eligible charitable entities chosen by our finalists with the .org of the Year honoree receiving a $30,000 donation. Today, we announce the 2020 .org of the Year. Here's John Nevitt, the president and CEO of Public Interest Registry. Hello, and welcome to the 2020.org Impact Awards. I'm thankful that you're able to join us for our final day of this year's program. It seems that at every turn, 2020 has been marked by hardship and challenge. The pandemic, the economic effects of the lockdowns, and the searing examples of societal division. But when things seem at their worst, we often see the best of us. In 2020, People checked on neighbors, brought supplies to food banks, sewed masks, and stood hand in hand with friends and strangers, seeking a world of equity, equality, and inclusion. Frontline workers have heeded the call to action around the world. Through these acts of selflessness and courage, 2020 has proven once again that the human spirit is indomitable. That spirit is present every day at the Public Interest Registry. The .org community is filled with millions of mission-driven organizations and people working to strengthen their communities and make the world a better place. We received over 500 .org Impact Award nominations this year. Each inspired our judges. Each reminded us of the better angels of our nature. I want to congratulate each nominee, finalist, and recipient. You demonstrate the best of us. And from the bottom of my heart, I want to thank you for the work you do which gets us to our final award, the .org of the Year. The top finalists in each category were reviewed by a panel of PIR judges. To go from 500 to seven to one is a humbling task. There are so many inspiring organizations in the .org community, but ultimately, after careful deliberation, we did identify our choice. I'd like to formally congratulate this year's .org of the Year winner, Days for Girls International, for their campaigns, Mass for Millions, and Periods Don't Pause for Pandemics. Days for Girls, founded in 2008, is a global movement to empower girls and women. Days for Girls started after its founder, Celeste Mergens, visited an orphanage in Nairobi, Kenya, and discovered that girls missed days of school because they couldn't afford feminine hygiene products. Armed with a 70,000-strong team of volunteer sewists, the organization was able to create and distribute Days for Girls kits to more than 1.7 million women and girls in 144 countries. And in 2020, Days for Girls expanded its mission by activating its 70,000 volunteers and more than 3,700 new recruits to sew masks to help combat the coronavirus. What if the most basic function of your body was the basis for your separation from school, from your family, from society? For many young women around the world, a period serves as an end to much more than a sentence. It prevents them from living full, meaningful lives. Days for Girls founder and CEO, Celeste Mergens, learned about this issue while working at an orphanage in Nairobi. I was personally familiar with poverty, but unaware of the magnitude of menstrual poverty. The girls were sitting on pieces of cardboard for days without access to what they needed for basic menstrual health. Something as essential as menstrual care is something every girl should have, period. Celeste and her team came up with a solution, a washable, long-lasting, reusable pad 
that was designed to meet cultural and environmental conditions in communities around the world. What began as a small group of volunteers envisioning, iterating, sewing, and assembling kits has grown into a network of chapters, teams, and clubs, all doing the work of getting supplies and educational materials in the hands of those who need them. When COVID struck, Days for Girls called upon their extensive network of volunteers and partners to create and deliver more than 1 million protective face masks, along with coronavirus education, to frontline workers and other vulnerable populations. But Days for Girls does much more working to foster female entrepreneurship and leadership too. Days for Girls Enterprises are groups of local women who are trained to produce and sell kits in their communities and also provide women's health education. This encourages them to have financial security while also addressing shame and stigma within their communities. Today, DFG's global operation of 15 staff members, 70,000 volunteers, 150 enterprises, and 1,000 chapters and teams across 144 nations on six continents, adds up to two million women and girls experiencing shameless and sanitary menstrual cycles. In many cultures, menstruation is considered a curse, and some so much so that wives and daughters will wait in sheds or huts or crawl spaces under homes during their entire cycle. With advocacy, education, and access to resources, change of mindset can occur, and the shift happens. To learn more about Days for Girls, go to www.daysforgirls.org and see why they are the much-deserved winners of the PIR.org Impact Awards.org of the Year. Here to join us and accept the award is Celeste Mergens, from Days for Girls International. Hey Celeste, congratulations on winning our highest honor, the .org of the Year Award. Hello John, so good to meet you. What a privilege it is to be here with you and have this amazing award. Can you tell us how Days for Girls came about? Days for Girls started in 2008, so 12 years ago now. And I had been helping in Kenya with sustainable solutions for one community there. But whenever I came in and out of town, I would help an orphanage and school in the slums, uh, near the slums of Kibera in a place called Dagoretti. And right after the post-election violence, I learned that the girls would wait in their room on a piece of cardboard for days during menstruation. I knew that had to change. They weren't able to go take their exams. They weren't able to take care of themselves, let alone go to the classroom. So we sent the funds for some other things they needed and for disposable single-use pads. It didn't occur to me that there were other options, but what I did know is if I was able to send funding the next month and the next month and they were struggling for food, they would choose food and not the products that would help the girls go to class. So we made the first washable kits. And even as we delivered them, the girls were so delighted to not only receive them and, and get their days back, but also to talk about that they matter and that their health matters and that they're a part of a stronger future for all of us. So we had this beautiful conversation. And as we finished, girls came to the door. There are about 10 of them that came out in the first group and they said, thank you so much. Because before you came, we had to let them use us if we wanted to leave the room and go to class. I'm hoping that doesn't mean what I feared it meant, but it turned out they were being sexually exploited in exchange for a single disposable pad. And that's the moment Days for Girls was born. What does this award mean to your organization? This award creates greater awareness, phenomenal funding, and opportunity to talk about the issues of menstrual equity, something you know, we'd rather talk about diarrhea than menstruation, but it matters so much. So we're talking elevating the conversation, which is how a shift to greater equity can happen. There are so many things that are hard to change. This isn't one of them. The issue of period poverty can change in our lifetimes. It will change because of people like you coming in and saying, let's change this. This award means not only greater awareness, not only greater funding to go reach the women and girls, 
but also the opportunity to talk about it. And that's a big deal. How would you like to grow over the next few years? John, the next few years are crucial. When Days for Girls started, people weren't talking about this. There weren't a lot of organizations addressing it. Multilateral organizations weren't addressing it. And today, more and more all the time are stepping up to talk about this. Our goal is that every girl and menstruator everywhere, period, will have access to education that's true, factual, and really addresses the fact that our bodies are amazing and shatters the stigma and shame, and that there are enterprises that address the need where they are, making washable menstrual products, suitable menstrual products locally, and are the leaders for the education and continue to have conversations with the entire community that shatters the shame that surrounds menstruation. That's our goal. In a way you could say, we're working ourselves out of a job. And I've never been more happy to, than to say that it's working. Where do you think you can make the biggest difference? That's a tough question. <laughs> Days for Girls works all over the globe. We have reached 145 countries on six continents. The beautiful thing is that we can see scale happening now. While every place has this, what do homeless women do? What does a girl whose family doesn't have resources do for menstrual care products so she can go to school? This is a very real issue in places you probably wouldn't guess, but it extends from the US, UK, all over the world, period poverty exists. The great thing about it is at the same time, solutions are scaling in the hands of people who are local. That's happening right now. And we have the opportunity to back that support, which your support will do to help those in Kenya, in Nepal, in Guatemala, all over the world, be able to reach more girls faster with the education and the solution that helps them month after month feel confident and dignity instead of shame. So where we can make the biggest difference is every girl, everywhere, period. And thankfully, a lot of us are stepping up to answer that call, including this award. Thank you so much, John. Thank you so much for joining us today and best of luck as you continue your important mission. Congratulations to Days for Girls International and all of this year's remarkable nominees. They show the profound impact the 10 million strong.org community has on making our communities and our world stronger. I'll turn it over one last time to our host who will close out today's program. Thank you very much. Thanks, John. It's been such a pleasure to be part of this celebration. To learn more about the amazing work of missiondriven.orgs around the world, go to www.orgimpactawards.org. Thank you all for participating in our .org Impact Awards. We'll see you next year.